Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. If you read the video title, I'm sure you already know why we're here today. We're gonna talk a little bit about how I would reapply to the Ivy League and the whole college application process. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you everyone so much for all your support on my past two college videos. I read every single comment and it's been really, really nice being able to interact and engage with you. I really do appreciate it. And if you like this kind of content, please let me know and I'll definitely get into doing some more of it. I'm also trying to experiment with a new, a little bit of a different hairstyle today. I'm at the library, I waited a few hours to get this room, probably like three, four hours. Yeah, I walked by so many people with this new hairstyle and I'm not confident at all. So let me know what you think. But anyways, enjoy. So let's jump right in. First and foremost, I just want to reflect. It's been a heck of a roller coaster ride. I've been putting myself through a lot of stress. I've been working hard. You kind of know the grind culture. It's been a journey filled with growth, challenges, self-discovery. And so some of you have been asking, but uh, which program are you going to go into? So I got into Western Ivy with advanced entry into their third and fourth year program. That's where I'm going to be headed. I I've learned so much about myself and just how hardworking I can be. Not how hardworking I am, but how hardworking I can be. But anyways, let's actually talk about what I would do to reapply for college. Okay, first thing I would obviously do is to understand that school is not as important as you think it is. Now, I'm not saying education is not important, I'm saying school is not important. Because back then, I was literally the model student. I would follow the rules and I never experimented with things, I never broke things. I made sure I attended every single class, I was five minutes early to every single lecture. When I realized there were lots of opportunities outside of school, for example, school excursions, I was so much of an opposition to this idea because I was afraid of missing classes, I was afraid of performing poorly on my test. And so back in like freshman year, with the exception of one class, I was literally getting like 97s on like every single test. And so the first thing I would understand is that it's okay to miss school, right? When there's an opportunity for an overnight excursion or there's an opportunity for a competition that requires you to miss school, I would say take it. If it's something you're genuinely passionate about, that opportunity is not going to come by again and never obsess over your attendance or effort. Be an opportunist, understand that colleges want to see you engage in things you're passionate about and not just follow a curriculum that every single person does because that is what actually differentiates you from the rest of the pack. Now, building onto this a little bit, the idea of pursuing your passions and leaving school. Even if you're like, for example, a varsity sports athlete, you're gonna be missing classes to go to competitions and stuff. If you're a pro chess player, you're gonna be missing stuff. And if you're like me, I actually had to miss class a few times to attend nationals for debate, to attend debate competitions here and there. I will say this though, don't just join random clubs and skip school because I told you to. Education is important. Now, every single lecture in school may not be because you can catch up, but your education as a whole is super, super important. But don't just join random clubs because you want to put it on your resume. It's better to be great at two or three things or even be the best at one thing as opposed to joining 20 different clubs. I know back in freshman year, I joined things like the green team, I joined things like the diversity club, I joined literally every single council that you could think of. The problem with that is you spread yourself too thin, you give yourself less opportunity to excel and thrive, really pursue your passions. That's truly what high school is about and I can't stress this enough. People have told me, oh, do things that you're interested in. That's kind of brushed over my shoulder for like the entirety of my four years. If you're a freshman now, pursue things because you're genuinely interested, not because you want it for the resume. College admissions officers are not stupid people and they know when somebody is just doing it for the resume. So if you do something that you truly enjoy, you give yourself more opportunity, more legroom to work with, and more space to thrive. I would actually say do put all of your eggs in one basket because it's better to try something that you love and fail at it and write about that on your common app personal statement than to do every single thing and have literally no results to break. Now this tip is also for other people who are about to apply, so whether you're in sophomore year or you're going into junior year, maybe not for senior year, but um, relatively early on this tip is for you. 
start early, right? Research your schools and understand the core values, their mission statements, and understand why you'd be a great fit for each different program. A great way of doing that is attending a pre-college program. I know back in grade nine, I applied for a Harvard summer course. I think I got rejected. I'm not too sure, um, but that's kind of when COVID hit. That was back in 2019. In grade 10, I applied for a Brown University's pre-college summer class, and I got early acceptance. What happened was due to COVID and other personal reasons, I wasn't able to attend. I cannot stress this enough. I only started prep in grade 11 summer. Seeing that I've done all this stuff once now, if I were to give any advice to anyone who's planning on applying to an Ivy League school, or any T20 school for that matter, or even the UCs, definitely understand schools and start early. Know what you're gonna say, know how you're gonna introduce yourself, and know exactly what each school is looking for. If you're trying to get into, for example, Harvard, understand the core values and why you would be a great fit for them. And the best way I would say to do so is to network, meet people at these pre-college programs and classes. So definitely, if you have the opportunity and you have the financial resources, definitely attend. I think the library lights turned off or something. One of the greatest things that you can do are attend networking events, meet new people, go to bigger scale competitions, right? If you can go international, go international. In truth, I never qualified for internationals um, for WIDPISC at debate. But anyways, on with that another time. You'll meet so many great people, you'll understand so many different things about the world, and you'll be able to meet and make so many new connections who can potentially offer you a research opportunity. And when you do these things, you'll increase the chances of yourself getting a better letter of recommendation, etc., etc. I did that for debate, but if I had to start over, I would choose to go into fencing. I think fencing is so, so interesting, and so many people do get recruited because of fencing. I know people who are on the fencing team who literally got recruited to these Ivy League schools simply because they're great at what they do. So if you're able to go to these international and national events, do so because that is literally going to be the spike. And if you don't know what a spike is, sometimes people refer to a spike as like the theme of your college application. Personally, I'm defined by debate and public speaking. Some other people are defined by sports. And so you've got to understand who you are and what you want to do and how you want to pitch yourself to these colleges. There are other ways to impress college admission officers. Something that can really change the mind of an admissions officer is words. Start early, understand the school, and really dive in on a personal statement. It's called a personal statement because it's meant to be personal for you. If I had to redo my essay, I would choose a completely different topic that would make my essay unique. You yourself are beautiful. And as an analogy that my friend once gave me, you are a diamond. So make sure the college admissions officers see every single side of that diamond. You have to make sure that every single piece of you is being seen. Make sure that you're displaying every single part. And you can do this through words because this is the most free part of your application, right? There's nothing bound to restrictions, nothing bound to statistics, nothing bound to numbers, achievements, whatever. So use this part to show, to be free, and to display yourself in a way that you are unique because you're a diamond, you're valuable, so make sure that you don't just have one part of your beautiful self being seen. So throughout high school and throughout my whole college application process, here are two important takeaway lessons. The first thing, which I think is the absolute most important thing, is that colleges are not looking for somebody who is literally the best. They're looking for somebody who's mature. They're looking for somebody who is engaged, they're looking for somebody who's passionate, they're really looking for somebody who understands where they are and where they want to be, and how they can leverage their skill set and assets at the college to make not only the college a better place, but the world a better place. And that's what many people, like myself, never understood until after applying and now it's too late. These schools look for people who are engaged, passionate, and willing to make the world a better place. If that checks out as one of your criteria, you should consider applying for the Ivy League schools, even though you might not have the best SAT score. And speaking of test scores, the second lesson that I want to talk about is school is not the most important thing, and I cannot stress this enough. It's so important to understand 
that going to classes and lectures every single day is a good habit to build. But it's not the end of the world if you miss something. Because the fact of the matter is, even the SAT now is digital. And so I had a 1420 SAT test score, which I actually didn't submit to all, any of the colleges that I applied for. Um, looking back, especially for UPenn Wharton and NYU Stern, which I really, really wanted to go to, looking back, it's okay to have a mediocre test score. If it's above the 25th percentile, submit it. That's amazing. Understand that colleges are not looking for a perfect student. So demonstrate that you're going to use the opportunities and use the things and the resources that you're given to make the world a better place. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Don't be afraid to try new things. And don't be afraid to use your whole high school experience as a canvas to experiment, to cultivate something better, and to inherently demonstrate that you're ready, you're mature, and you know what you want to do and where you want to be. So yeah. That kind of wraps up all of my reflections and what I would do if I were to reapply. Don't focus too, too much on attendance. It's not that important. Um, start early and be passionate about who you are and what you want to do. Don't spread yourself too thin. Put your, all of your eggs in one or two baskets and you'll be okay. If I could cite this, I would, but I really cannot remember where I heard this. It might have been an Instagram video of a professor. But anyways, I remember a quote that goes something along the lines of people overestimate what they can do in a day or a week and they underestimate what they can do in a year or two. That just about wraps it up. I want to thank you guys so much for your support, for um, watching this video. And wherever you apply, I wish you all the best. Good luck with your future applications and comment down below. Let me know if you get in because I'm going to be jealous, but I think that's amazing. Warm wishes coming from me. Thanks guys, peace out.